Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Videodrome. Today I want to talk about a fairly obscure cult gem I recently stumbled across in a DVD shop. I knew nothing about it when I found it, but when I saw the director, I just had to pick it up. It's called Dante 01, and the director is Mark Caro. I adore the work of Jean-Pierre Genet, Amelie, A Very Long Engagement, Micmacs, The Young and Prodigious T.S. Spivet, magical films of bottomless imagination and infectious whimsy. If you're familiar with Genet's first two features, however, Delicatessen and The City of Lost Children, you've likely noticed how much darker they are in tone. These films are both visionary accomplishments, instantly recognizable as Genet's work, but his sensibility is also clearly being counterbalanced by something else. Another style, another viewpoint, someone working in a parallel direction to make the worlds of those films vivid, disturbing, and memorable. This is because he was working with a co-director, visual artist Mark Caro. Caro and Genet made a great team, but obviously, each eventually decided to go his own separate way. Genet found a respectable amount of critical and financial success, while Caro never really managed to establish himself as a solitary director. Dante 01 was released in 2008, and to date, it's the only solo effort of his career. Deep in space, a strange prison orbits a raging inferno called Dante. When a mysterious new inmate arrives among its disturbed denizens, and the prison's corporate owners begin a dangerous new treatment, events are set into motion that will lead either to salvation or disaster. At first glance, the movie appears to have been marketed as a gritty sci-fi thriller, Escape from Alcatraz set in space, or maybe something not unlike Stuart Gordon's enjoyably pulpy fortress. The film is actually, it turns out, a religious fable, constructed around intricate symbolism and metaphysical concepts. The hero, played by Lambert Wilson, almost never speaks, his origin is never explained, and he develops into an odd Christ-like figure, capable of healing the spiritual affliction of those he encounters, his destiny to sacrifice himself for the ultimate redemption of humanity. This lofty premise seems as likely to disappoint as it is to surprise, depending on the taste of each individual viewer. I, for one, loved it. Caro layers the film with allegory, biblical and tantric references, philosophical and literary allusions, developing his story around an engagement with ideas over action. His approach is stylized and visceral, entertaining, but deeply serious in its intent. Absent is the whimsy and comic energy of Caro's collaborations with Jean-Pierre Genet, maybe the reason why the film is not better known. Caro's direction is moodier, more cerebral, which could put off fans of Delicatessen or City of Lost Children. Those movies are totally singular achievements, and Dante 01 marks a step in a different direction. Caro has his own concerns he's chasing. He's definitely a unique and powerful artist in his own right, one deserving of more attention. Although he hasn't succeeded in financing another film, his visual skills continue to be utilized by other directors. He has a real gift for taking fantastic settings and making them real through an imaginative accumulation of detail. That ability is on full display in Dante 01. The film was made on a limited budget, and while the scale is carefully controlled, visually, the film is spectacular and directed with an intensity that showcases Caro's commitment. DVD copies of Dante 01 can be found fairly easily and cheaply, and I think it's an exciting discovery. Cult movie fans should take special note, because in the making of documentary included with the DVD, it's stated that the film originated as an idea by Alejandro Jodorowsky. Knowing this, one's appreciation for its unusual thematic and symbolic density can be deepened. A few of the ideas here feel particularly Jodorowskyan. The ending is a highlight, a hallucinatory and psychedelic leap into the same mystical territory envisioned for Jodorowsky's Dune, with bizarre special effects created by Pierre Buffin. 
the same designer behind the trippy CGI visuals of Gaspar Noé's Enter the Void. Anyone who appreciates that sort of elaborate visual experience ought to track this movie down. I think it'd make for a great double feature with Claire Denis's High Life, esoteric sci-fi that actually tries to push the genre into ambitious and challenging new places.